Hello everybody and welcome to the channel, I'm Chief Sweet. Today I'm gonna teach you how to set up a green anole tank. So first off, you do want a 20 gallon tall minimum for your green anole. Now here's the thing, a lot of people do use 10 gallons. While you can get away with a 10 gallon, it is, it's not as tall, you want something a little taller. A 20 gallon tall is perfect. Now this is technically a fish tank, but that's what a lot of people get. Um, I have like a hexagon from PetSmart for some of my green anoles. Um, you, Remember, bigger is always better. 20 gallon minimum is what I use because you, you really want the height of the cage. And a 10 gallon, they do require heat. So if you use a 10 gallon, it's extremely hard to heat because 10 gallons so small, it could overheat them in the tank. And that's what the number one thing I see is most people get a 10 gallon, put a heat lamp on top of there and just fries them because it's not a lot of room inside of this 10 gallon. As you can see right here, there's a tiny little 10 gallon. Sorry if that busted your eardrums. So this is the 10 gallon right here. A lot of people do get this for their green anoles. It doesn't have the height, and a lot of people, like I said, it, it can overheat much faster because it's much smaller. However, if you do get one of these, make sure to put the helium as close to one side as possible without melting the plastic, of course, because you do want it somewhat cooler. It's gonna be much harder to cool on this side, but this is the thing. These guys do need UVB, and this is why I say a lot of people fry it. If you have another UVB lamp, a lot of people use the coils, don't use the coils, but if you have it right here, it's gonna be blocking a lot of ventilation off right there. And also there is the taller versions, and like I said, that one has even a smaller lid, so if you do it like this, you're gonna be blocking off tons of airflow, and there's little slots on the bottom. It's just, it's just much harder, and these are a little bit larger lids. Even though they're tiny, like skinny-wise, they are long. They could be like eight inches long because their tails are long. They're not that small a lizard, but they are kind of. However, like I said, if you do it, you're gonna have to have it like this. I like to put mine like that, but this is a 10 gallon tank. If you did it, I don't recommend it. I recommend it 20 gallon minimums. Now to the real minimum of this thing, the 20 gallon. I feel like this is really loud and I'm sorry. Okay, so this is the 20 gallon tall. A lot of people get this at PetSmart because it's very cheap. I think these are like $25 on their sales they have. Um, the screen top's gonna probably cost you like $20 by itself um, compared to the tank. However, like I said, there are other options. And if you wanna go bigger, you always can. Nothing wrong with going bigger, it's perfectly fine. I recommend it for a lot of stuff. You can add more stuff, you have a lot more room to work with stuff. And a lot of times these fish tanks suck because you have to come in through the top, take the lamps off and all that less stuff. But anyways, let's get into it. Substrate wise, you can use Repti soil or you could use uh, coconut fiber. I will say this, I'm not a fan of coconut fiber. Not a fan at all, never was. It molds too easy, it dries out too easy, and it's just a waste product. It's coconuts, grind it up, not a fan. I have some of my personal mix, which if you wanna know what that is, I'll make a whole video about that as well, but I also have um, stuff close enough to that of my substrate mix as well. Repti soil is perfectly fine. It's tr they're, they're very tropical, I, I say that, lightly because you know what is tropical really is it like florida is it uh, amazon rainforest again so they're tropical repti soil works fine some people use like um cypress mulch that'll work but i like repti soil more or soil like that because you can put plants in it these guys do like their humidity a lot more so i have some of the soil right here we're gonna put it in there we go Whee! now myself i like deep substrate I'm sorry if I'm yelling into this mic. It is what it is. So, but I like deep substrate. I like four inches. <laughs> Anyways, I like four to six inches of substrate. Now, obviously, these smaller tanks, you cannot do that. But I like to do bioactive. Now, bioactive is really easy. People get scared about that. We'll talk about it. You don't have to at all. Let's say I do about this much of substrate. It's taller. I got to kind of get up <laughs> out of my seat here. There we go. Oh yes. Now there's rocks in my substrate, so if, if you hear the clanking up against the windows, that's just what it is. There's rocks and soil all over the place. Anyways, so the reason I said you want a tall tank in the first place is because they are these lizards are semi-arboreal, which means they like to climb. You're gonna find them in trees, in bushes, off the ground a lot of times. Now they can be on the ground as well. So not, I'm not saying they're not on the ground, but they're mostly found in bushes, in trees, off the ground. They're not like a terrestrial lizard, like a leopard gecko. They, you need height and you need lots of places for them to climb. And that's why we have sticks. Now, you could get vines from PetSmart. You could get all kinds of stuff. They even have tree limbs at PetSmart. But I got these in my backyard. This is oak tree. Um, there is poisonous trees that you don't want to put with your reptiles like pine, cedar. Um, there's some other ones as well. 
there's just make sure to look up, but oak is safe. Oak is really easy because you can tell by the leaf of it. Um, there's lots of oak, but I cut this off of a tree. Don't you, you don't usually want to get stuff off the ground because bugs and ants are usually attacking it and devouring it. But this is just a tree limb. I cut it off of the tree. And then what you do is you can just start putting it and decorate however you please. But remember, you're going to have to make it kind of tall. That's the thing. Now, I'm not very good at decorating. That's the, you know, that's the hardest part I have with everything I ever, I do. But I'm going to try to make it as tree-like as possible. If I can. I'm like, I'm like, the, 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 my biggest thing is like I suck at decorating. It's like the worst thing ever. Like, I'm just so terrible at it. Anyways, so I'm going to do something like this, maybe. Like that. Okay. I feel like it's missing a little bit more tree limbs. For now, we'll go with this. Um, so we have our tree limbs. One thing I like to do though, is um, these guys do like a humid. And one problem I see with a lot of people, and this will solve your issue, is the ground, there's nothing covering the ground. And if we go outside, most of the time you're gonna see that the ground is covered by leaf litter or by grass or something. And that's why we can't, that's, a lot of people will have to spray their tanks like every single day. But if you mimic outside, and just put some leaf litter down, some, uh, some pl actual plants. It'll pretty much blanket the ground and it'll keep that humidity trapped in the soil. And that's a great way to keep your humidity um, really high inside of a tank. And it's a great way to keep the soil very moist and from drying out. So that's what we're gonna do. I went in my backyard, yet again, uh, got some leaf litter. Now, if you're too afraid of going in your backyard and getting something off the ground like leaves or go and get it off a tree. I will have everything linked in the description where you can buy it online from a pet store on Amazon um, where it's already sanitized. You don't have to worry about nothing. But if, you, you know, if you're not scared, you could do it just like me. So here are the leaves. I'm the leaf man. These are some leaves from a pecan tree. So here we have it. We're getting close to being done but we need foliage. We need something to kind of hide the, there's a lot of empty space here. It feels very open. You know, we need to hide that, make them feel safe. You can do it with fake plants. You can go to a pet store and you can obviously put fake plants all over the place, like right here, kind of by this tree, makes it look like it's grown out of the tree. Provides a little bit more hiding spots for them. And they will use this. They'll try to hide it in this uh, bush-like area, if you will. I'm gonna put this one right here. Try to fill in and make it make them feel safe. That's the whole point is they want to they want to feel safe. If they don't feel safe, they'll be like brown and a brown ugly color. They feel a little threatened. So, we're going to try to and you want a lot of foliage. This still is not a lot of foliage. I will tell you this much. Um goodness. Why won't they stay? Okay. As you can tell, only have 3 plants. It's not the best looking stuff. But that was for a reason, because I'm not gonna use fake plants. Like I said, you can use fake plants and you wanna try to cover up as much stuff as possible. This is still very bare. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use live plants. Now mind you, if you go to a pet store, these right here are like $10. Like this is $10, now it wants to stay. What the heck? Anyways, these, are, these ones like this are like 10 bucks. You can go to Walmarts and buy this right here, a pothos plant. Look at that, I don't know if you can see it. Look at that. This is $10, let me see, where's the, right there, look at that, 10 bucks. And honestly, you don't even have to take it out of the pot. I do highly recommend taking it out of the pot because then it could go into the soil and grow very well, but you don't have to. Um, a lot of times, if you do have a female and a male and they're in the same tank and they mate, the female will lay her eggs in um, the this inside the pot. They really like to do that. But you could just do something like this. And look how much, look how much this has. This has a lot of leaves and this is gonna grow in very fast. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. You're probably thinking like, I'm not very good with plants. I kill plants all the time. I'm gonna teach you exactly how not to kill your plants. It, anybody could do this. This is insanely easy. These are two tricks to keep this plant alive. Pothos are amazing. Anybody can have one and I've got the trick for you. I'm telling you right now, um, I used to kill plants all the time. With this right here, this pothos is just gonna grow all inside of this tank, okay? And that thing is, an LED bulb. This right here is a great value. LED 60 watt daylight bulb, 5,000K. Um, household, this is just a household, not a grow light. You don't have to have a grow light at all. A lot of people are like, oh, I have to have a grow light to grow plants. No, you do not. Any LED daylight, it has to be daylight, um, 5,000K bulb is gonna grow your plant. Um, that's the biggest thing with uh, plants is they don't get good light and they don't grow. With this right here, it's gonna, I have tanks that just use this, that are growing like crazy. I need to trim them up. I actually have to take leaves out of the um, 
in enclosures because they grow so heavily. So like I said, LED, daylight bulb, and it's gonna brighten the cage up like crazy. It's gonna look beautiful. So that's the problem. You will have to have an extra lamp for that. But if you use live plants, you can make your enclosure look beautiful. And I'll tell you right now, anoles love pothos and they love live plants. They like to sit on the leaves and drink the dew off the leaves when you spray the tank down. But like I said, you can just put it in here. I am gonna take this out of the, uh, what's it called? The pot though. But if you wanted to, you don't have to. You could just like, oh gosh. If you wanted to, you could just throw this down in here like this. You know, bam, look at that. And just, because some people do that. You don't, you know, you could do that as well. You know, bam, look at that. Look how much this one plant, just look how much more it looks, like how much uh, foliage is in here. You can get two of these. These three plants, these plastic plants, $30. You get two pothos, put one on one side, one on the other, bam, $20. It looks beautiful, and it's going to grow and fill the cage in much more. And the vines get really thick, so you just get more vines inside the tank, because this is a very viney plant. It'll grow vines off of it. So... I, I honestly say go to, and you can get this at Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's, any garden store. Pothos is one of the most popular plants you could buy for indoor um, houses and stuff like that. So next up, I will say, um, uh, green anoles really don't eat from a food bowl. So you can have a food bowl. Um, I don't put food bowls in mine because I've tried it. I've tried to put like mealworms in there, doobie roaches, and they just don't eat it. I don't know why. My, my green anoles only like crickets, and I'm just like, I've tried everything. But you can put a food bowl, but I will, I will say this. Um, a lot of times I will spray my tank every two days and the green anoles really like to drink the water droplets off of the leaves, but I do put a water bowl on the floor and I make sure it has water in there at all times. So that way, and they will go down and drink from it, but it'll be very rarely and I'll show you. Bam, we have a water bowl. I got this at Walmart as well. It's kind of crazy. Um, this is a really cool water bowl and I'll put this right down here. It's somewhere easy for me to put my hand into and uh, you know, that way I can like clean it out every day and stuff like that. And I'll put it down there, right there. Um, and we're almost done. Now I will say, I do want like two more sticks in here. But for now, this will do. Like I still feel like it's very bare to me. But again, because like I said, you really want it cluttered. Green anoles really like that clutter. They really like to hide. They don't like to be out in the open. When they're out in the open, they turn brown, they get scared. When they're brown, they're not down. When they're green, they're happy. Now there are brown anoles as well. Don't get that confused. Brown anoles are brown at all times. So we are almost done besides the lighting. Now, green knolls need a screen top. You need a screen top for your green knolls or they will climb out. They can climb glass, they can climb, and they're very fast, um, so they can climb out. So you do need a screen top for this. You can't just have it open, they'll just climb right out, take off. Um, also, it really helps if you have a front opening door. That's why I you know, highly recommend front opening enclosures, like reptile enclosures, but this is this tank, I have an empty tank, I'm gonna show you how to do it. So, for heating, um, if you live in a hot house, I would recommend going with a, like if, you're, if your room temp is like 78 degrees, you live in a very hot house, I would recommend using a thermostat with a Zilla really low profile heat. It is a 25 watt bulb. They sell them, uh, they sell them with a 50 watt as well, but 25 watts right here. It's very low heat, but it's very good for them because that way they can sit up and bask and you could put it like right here, close to where they could run up underneath it and get some warmth. Um, it is 25 watts. They also have a 25 watt exoterra bulb. I have this all linked in the description as well if you want to just buy it on Amazon. But if you live in a cold house, you like to keep it at 68. I do recommend getting a Zoomed Repti Zoo Basking 50 watt lamp. Now you can also get an exoterra 50 watt. Any basking bulb will get you there. If you can get a halogen 50 watt, you don't, you don't have to get a Zoomed. You can get an exoterra, like I said. You get, there's tons of uh, different types of heat lamps out there. But what you want is you want the inside of this tank like above. Um, the temp gauges, you could put temp gauges on here as well. Um, you kind of want it in like the high 80s. Um, once you start getting like in the high 90s, that's a little too, that's gonna be too hot for them. They're not gonna like it, but they will be okay with it. You don't want 100 degrees up in this piece. When it's triple digits, they don't like it too much, but they're okay with high 80s, mid 90s type of temperatures. Remember, you do want a cool side, but what usually, what usually is gonna happen is you're gonna have a heat lamp and it's gonna get hot, but down below, down here, towards ground level. They might come down here to cool off because you're gonna have most of your heat up top. So the next thing after heat that you will need is UVB, preferably a T5 linear 
UVB system. Now this is an Arcadia Shade Dweller. This will work perfectly fine for your annuls. You could also use a 5.0 T5 by Zoomed. Um, this one, I like it just because it's smaller and that way it kind of, uh, you know, gets this little area and it has a shaded area over here. So that way they're just like constantly getting blasted by UVB. And since they do like to come up, the Shade Dweller is gonna offer them very good UVB levels, levels because this is meant for like crispu uh, crepuscular animals, which are kind of like leopard geckos that don't come out often. It's a weaker UVB, but it still provides up close higher UVB. So this is $40, they sell it at PetSmart, they sell it online, um, I think it might be 50, inflation, it went up in price. It used to be 40, anyways, it's like 50 bucks. These things last an entire year, and the bulb, once it's a year old, you can replace it for $20, I think it's less, the freaking thing fell down, man. <laughs> Anyways, so this is very important. So when you have your heat lamp, you want your heat lamp and your UVB right next to each other. You do not want them like this, okay? This is not how you want it because when your lizard goes to basks, he needs to bask under heat and UVB. UVB is essential to lizard's health. Um, so you want them right beside each other. So that way he, when he goes to get the heat, he's also getting the UVB. It's okay that there's nothing over here. This is a shaded area, it's supposed to be cool, and plus the UVB is gonna be pretty strong, it's gonna kinda like hurt the plant, um, so it's good to have it on the side where it's like kinda not, you know, the plants aren't around, plus the heat will kill the plant faster, so that's why I was, I was gonna put it on this side, but I actually am gonna put it, I just had to do it to show you this way, um, since these plastic plants are here, I don't want it until it melts, you know, if you were doing copying this the same setup, I'm gonna put the UVB behind it like so. And what we'll do is the reason I have two, like I said, obviously you don't have to use this one right here. You could also just use a um, regular lamp from Walmart. Again, I'm not a, I'm not sponsored by Walmart here, but they sell these clamp lights at Walmart for seven bucks. And then I got the daylight light, right? You could put the daylight one in there, put it right here, obviously. Bam, and then get another one for your heat lamp. The difference between heat is a ceramic base, so that way it doesn't melt. And then put your heat lamp beside it and do it that way. But, and I brought these out to show you. But I'm gonna do it this way for right now. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and put the the um, daylight bulb right here. This is, uh, and I've done this before and it's really close to the heat lamp. It didn't melt. If you don't wanna do that, like I said, you can use two different lamps, but I'm gonna do it like this. Then we'll get our 50 watt bulb right here. I'm gonna put it on this side. Bam, like so. And then when we plug it all in, it'll look awesome. Also, as you can tell, the sides are kind of open and you can kind of see through it. That's another thing that it's gonna kind of make them look like they're open, right? It's gonna, it might freak them out a little bit because it's like, oh, there's so much open space. What you can do to counteract it is this right here. Again, not sponsored by Walmart. Forgive me. I went and got some black poster board from Walmart. It's just like, it doesn't matter. You can do black paper, it doesn't matter. And you can just, just cut it and then put it around the sides, but leave the front open, you know, like do it like this, like that, cut it, bam. And so that way it kind of makes it like more closed in. It doesn't feel like every, you know, there's the middle of the open. It, you know, makes them feel more safe. Like I said, they want to feel safe, they want to have clutter, they want to have places to hide. So that's why we got to clutter up a lot with this setup. So now we're done. Let's turn it on and see how she looks. And here's the finished product. I honestly love how it turned out. I did leave the plastic plants in there with the pothos because I just didn't have another pothos. But uh, this is a good amount of sticks and over time the pothos will grow in. So if you did it this way, you didn't have two pothos, you could just take um, the plastic plants out once the pothos takes over because the pothos will take over this tank and it's gonna look exceptional. And that's all I have for you. I hope you enjoyed. I hope I helped with setting up your green and old tank. If I did, like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.